words between Kevin Harvick and Greg Biffle. He was kind of ticked off that I didn't give him his lap back, but he was kind of a duck in the water, so. Well, it kind of stems, starts from last week. Oh, around goes Biffle. On oh, the outside wall. Oh, that's not bad. You know, he gets on TV and says, I'm going to have to learn this isn't the truck series. I just think that was appropriate. What was the conversation between you and Biffle? I just told him to get his head out of his butt. Obviously, the 57 car was a tremendous amount better than he was. Uh, Kevin couldn't even get within four car lengths or three car lengths there toward the end. This is going to be an interesting season. I can just feel it. It was warm and sunny in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Today it's chilly, overcast, but we should be okay for 200 miles of racing. It's 59 degrees right now. It's the Nazareth 200 on FX. The 13th race of the 33 race series for the NASCAR Bush Series. Speedway in the Lehigh Valley of Pennsylvania, about 60 miles north of Philadelphia, 80 miles from the Big Apple, New York City. It's the Nazareth 200, race 13 of the NASCAR Bush Series season of 33 race schedule. Now, Larry McReynolds, we have talked about what a tough little racetrack this is, tough on the drivers, tough to set up for, but once the race starts, You've got to make good decisions. Oh, I guarantee you. We've seen this last week at Loudon, New Hampshire, with this very same race tire they brought here this week. The decisions and the strategy made by those crew chiefs on pit road in this 200-lap event, it could make the difference in the outcome, not necessarily who has the best race car. All right, let's head back down to pit road, see what's going on, guys. Well, you think you're smart enough to pick the winner of this race at, the, at uh, Nazareth. I wish you good luck with it. 18 of the 40 starters in today's event have never run a race here before. Four first-time winners have come out of the last six runnings of this race. I don't mean just first-time winners here at Nazareth. I mean first time in the series. And the pole winner in the last 13 runnings of this event has only won the race one time. Go ahead. Pick the winner. But you better stick around to the end. You're probably going to be wrong. Let's go to Jeff Hammond. Well, Dick... Those rookies that are driving this race are not the only ones here. This is my first time. After taking a quick look at this racetrack, it reminds me a lot of the old North Wilkesboro racetrack. Uphill, downhill, all the corners are different. People talk about four turns, no way. There are six turns of this racetrack, believe me. Some of them look like they're almost off camera. This is a very tricky racetrack. The best of the best today were well, only the ones that's going to survive and win here at this particular racetrack. It's going to be very, very much a tough day for these guys, crews and drivers, to get the job done. We're about ready to start the Nazareth 200, but first, let's go down for the invocation and the national anthem here in and Nazareth. now, race fans, would you please rise to your feet and remove your caps for our invocation. Here's Chaplain Ron Pegram from Motor Racing Outreach. Before I pray, please join me in a moment of silence in honor of Lynn Bowler, three-time championship car owner in the Featherlight Modified Series. Father, we are grateful for your love to everyone that is present today. We do lift up to you, Lynn Bowler's family, and ask that you be a special blessing to them at this time. We thank you for his contributions to the sport over the years. We ask, Father, right now that you would just bless this time that we have joined here at this track to enjoy. We thank you, Father, for the skill and the 
abilities that you have given all these drivers, these team members that work so hard to provide this sport for us to enjoy. We pray your blessings upon each of them. Pray that they may be safe. And Father, we pray that the fans today may enjoy every moment of it and that you may be glorified in all that happens here today in our lives. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Now please remain standing for our national anthem. Here is the national anthem singer for the Philadelphia Flyers, please, Lauren Hart. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket regular the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave oh the land of the free and the And now, ladies and gentlemen, to utter those famous words of motorsports, here's our Grand Marshal, Marty Nolstein, and from DECA Batteries, Delight Bridegum. Gentlemen, Gentlemen start, start your engines. engines. pit road for us. Larry, let's take a look at that starting grid. First row, Tony Raines, his first pole in NASCAR Bush Series competition, and our points leader, Kevin Harvick. Jason Keller, best finish here, is second, but our winner from last week, and they brought the same race car here. In row three, Bobby Hamilton Jr. doing double duty, and Hank Parker, who won his first race at California. Jimmy Johnson, he's seventh in the point standings. His best finish this year is fourth. Jamie McMurray still looking for a top 10 finish. Kenny Wallace hasn't raced here since 1994. His best finish is third. Tim Fedewa, the only two-time winner and one of only two winners in the field. David Donahue making his best start of the year. Jeff Hervis was second here in 1998. Clay Rogers, his best start in four races this year. They tested here, felt good about the test. Row nine engineering graduate of Old Dominion University, Ashton Lewis Jr. And David Green's got a lot of experience here. The Talladega winner, Mike McLaughlin, has eight starts here, but has never led a lap. Hey, Larry, how about Ted Christopher? He's got two top tens here in a Bush car. And on the pole for today's modified race later on. You know, there's 17 drivers out of 40, Larry, who have never raced on this racetrack, and as difficult as this place is, it could be wild. And if I'm their crew chief, it's like, look, we need to make laps. Race this racetrack. Let's stay out of trouble. The only way you're going to gain experience is if you're on the racetrack. 
The number 72 car of A.J. also had to withdraw. They blew a motor. And Tim Sauter in the 61 will have to go to the back of the field for an unapproved engine change. And what an unapproved engine chain is in Bush Grand National, unless you blow the engine, have an engine failure, if you decide to change the motor, maybe the engine don't feel right, you can change it, but you have to start the race at the rear of the field. And you see Drew White, Nate Monteith, two of those guys making their first start here at Nazareth. Let's take a look at the race analysis for the Nazareth 200. There we have 40 cars starting. Pit window 90 to 100 laps, but that may not come into play. That's going to be a key, though, I think, Steve, because a lot of teams are saying they may can do this race on one stop. And with this hard tire, we may see some two-tire stops, but with this tire, we see it week in and week out. That pit window, it can come into play. And, and you said it, too. The guys that make the best decisions from the pits may determine the outcome of this race. And giving them good pit stops. Yesterday, it was hot and sunny, but that's not the case here today. Air temperature, it's not. It hadn't even busted 60 degrees, Larry. Well, I talked to a lot of crew chiefs this morning, a lot of head scratching going on because, again, the racetrack was very hot yesterday, slick and greasy, a lot cooler today. The big fear is the cars are going to be a lot tighter. Won't want to turn as good today with the cool, overcast conditions. Take a look at our onboard cameras for today. That's outside the 17 of Clay Rogers. You said making his fourth start. We are nearing the start of the Nazareth 200. Pace car is off, Larry. 200 laps. Everybody be hunting the bottom of this racetrack before they get to turn one. Tony Range leads the field into turn one. Jeff Green, he's got the bottom of the racetrack here through turn two. Got Kevin Harvick in that two car trapped on the outside. Tony Range leads him down that long backstretch. Jeff Green underneath Kevin Harvick. Followed by Jason Keller and Bobby Hamilton Jr. Pretty much now the first nine or ten cars, single foul. Don't look like for long, though. Saw some smoke dust up there from the back of the pack. You know, Larry, if you look at Tony Raines, the first half of the season, the first quarter, his average finish was 24th. The last six races, 14th. They just keep getting better and better every week. They come to the racetrack. They're qualifying better. They're finishing better. And they're finishing races. And that's the big thing. That, that's the key. They ran good early. They just couldn't close it. Tony Raines, the 1996 ASA champion, won four races in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Larry, I talked about some uh, dust kicking up. I think it might have come from the 17 of young Clay Rogers. And this is going down into turn one. Here you see Clay Rogers in the 17 car. Uh-huh. Oh, I was kind of see why. It looked like maybe Rich Bickle in the 59 car kind of checked up. Clay Rogers had to jump on the brakes and got the car loose. David Donahue also in the 25 right behind Bickle. Looking out the rear of Clay Rogers' car. His fourth race of the 2001 season, just 20 years old. And we mentioned they tested here. Problem is, they decided to take that car to Loud, New Hampshire, was involved in that early wreck. They had to bring a different car here. Yeah, they ran over 300 laps. Crew Chief Russ Strupp said they're very happy with what they accomplished for young play, but as you said, <laughs> that wasn't the car they wanted to bring. But he did get that valuable track time, seat time at this racetrack, regardless of which car he was in. Clay Rogers currently riding 16th. Tony Rain still leading. Kevin Harvick and Jeff Green there in the yellow 10 car is third. Look at Kevin Harvick, though. He looks like he won't lead in this thing. He wants those five bonus points for leading, but he has to duck in behind as they head off into turn three here. You know, Larry, Tony Rain told me that the confidence factor is really going up for him as well, that he and his crew chief, Michael Cadlesick, they call him Dover, that they really got on the same page here recently and, and weren't afraid to talk to each other. Well, and that's so important. It, it's communication. I mean, uh, it's got to where a driver and a crew chief, they've almost got to be like a marriage with a husband and a wife or, or a son and a father. You've got to have that relationship, but most importantly, you've got to communicate. Tony Raines continues to lead the field after six laps. 
Jeff Green starting to heat up behind Kevin Harvin. Jason Keller in the 57 behind Green, his teammate, and there's Greg Biffle in the 60 car. Tony Raines, he's doing exactly what he needs to do right now. He's running the bottom of this racetrack. Kevin Harvick keeps looking to the inside, but Tony Raines slams the door here on him, running the bottom of the racetrack so hard to pass him. Lap traffic, we're coming up on lap traffic now, could play a big role. Boy, to get close to our leader, Tony Raines. And Larry, we talked about the inexperience of this racetrack. 17 drivers who had never been on the track before. Jason Keller told me at practice yesterday they had a hard time running fast laps because of the slow traffic. Well, here we're already lapping cars at lap seven on a one-mile racetrack. There's such a speed differential from the fast cars to the slower cars. Last week's winner, Jason Keller, in the tire tracks of the number 10, Jeff Green. Jeff Green, he may have qualified third, but every practice they've held here this weekend, Steve, he has been a fast race car. Crew Chief Harold Holly told me they just bobbled a little bit in qualifying, but this is the same car that he ran at Loudon, New Hampshire last week as well. Larry, last year, Jeff Green started on the pole in this race, and he finished fourth. And Harold Holly told me yesterday he, he was shaking. He was so bad. He said, I want to win me a dirt pole. <laughs> <laughs> I, when he told me they'd not want to pole this year, I was shocked. I know. I, it's hard to believe you guys have not let a, uh, sat on a pole yet. Well, he wasn't shocked yesterday. He was mad. Hank Parker Jr., who won at California, slows on the racetrack. See a little bit of smoke coming out the back of that thing. Uh, he may have uh, had engine problems here early in this race. Let's go down to Jeff Hammond and see what's going on, Jeff. Yeah, Steve, uh, just monitoring the 36 car. They're getting ready to bring him in. They believe they've lost an engine as he came down into turn one. Smoke erupted out of the car. He just about lost it. So I believe he's got oil coming out of the engine right now. Tough break for Hank Parker Jr. Larry came in here 20th on the points. He, after he won at California, been fighting his way up the point standings. Had that momentum going, but I talked about the difference in the straightaways. And, and there's a compromise with the corners, but a lot of crew chiefs told me, Larry, big compromise in gear selection. You've got the short straightaways that you need a very low gear for to reach maximum RPMs, but it turns a lot of RPMs on the long backstretch over there. So RPMs, hanging RPMs, where they just get up there and stay, that could cause a lot of motor attrition today. And we just heard that Hank Parker Jr. has, in fact, blown a motor and he'll be done for the day as they raise the hood you're watching nascar bush series racing on fx from nazareth pennsylvania tony range continues to lead nascar on fx is brought to you by Haviland, by pep boys and by budweiser fx we have a new leader here at Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Kevin Harvick has taken the lead from Tony Raines just moments ago. Larry, let's take a look at how it happened. Well, this was coming off the final corner. And right here's where Harvick had been getting a good bite, trying to get under Tony Raines lap after lap, but he got a better bite, gets to the inside, got the inside position, crossed the start-finish line. Tony Raines has to say, okay, buddy, it's yours. Right before that, rookie Scott Wimmer in the 23 car came in here 10th in point, but he made contact with the wall. There he sails off to the right, There's no question. Looks like the right front tire went down. And he's on pit road right now. Let's check in with Dr. Dick Bergren. Well, he had just called into his pit crew literally a lap before hitting the wall, and you are right, Larry McReynolds said that the right front tire was going down. As he went into the wall, there were sparks right out from underneath the right front corner of that car. He had no control over it. Bam! Winner hit the wall. This is the second time he's crashed in two weeks. Last week, it was in New Hampshire in practice. Well, Dick, we're working caution now, not for Scott Wimmer, but the 93 car of Bill Hoff has made contact. And our first caution of the day, there's Hoff. Our first caution of the day flies on lap number 19. Be interesting to see what some of the leaders do or any of the cars. I, I feel like right now they don't need tires, but if there's a question, and we've seen this last week with Jeff Green at Loud, New Hampshire, if they think now they could make it on one stop, possibly may see some teams pit, especially cars at the back of the pack to get that tank full of fuel. Kevin Harvick leads the Nazareth 200. He's followed by Tony Raines, Jeff Green, Jason Keller, and Greg Biffle. We'll be right back on FX.
Welcome back to Naz. We're still under caution for the first time today, brought out by the number 93 of Bill Hoff. Kevin Harvick, the points leader, also leading the race. Hey, let's check in with Dick Berger, and he has a report on Randy LaJoy. He's already pitted for four tires, and the reason for that is that they decided they didn't have the best race car, not the fastest vehicle in the field. Pit early today, as they did last week. Sometimes this business of short pitting can work to a fellow's advantage. They'll short pit now, then won't pit when everybody else does. That ought to put them up at the front of the field. Then when nobody else pits, they'll pit again, and who knows? It might cause them to win the race. To Jeff Hammond. Thanks, Dick. Sorry about that. Uh, one of the things I'm noticing, Larry McReynolds, is standing down here in the pit area, as you come across the start-finish line, the, the track almost has like a rise in it and a little swell as it comes down into turn one. I've noticed a lot of cars locking up the left front tire coming down in this corner because you're driving so hard, getting on the brakes. And you talked about it earlier how tricky this place is. It's a lot like a road course. Standing here, it almost reminds me of watching some of the cars come over and down into a road course area car is very, very, uh, has to get slowed down very much going in this one. Otherwise, it gets out against the wall. A lot of these cars are having trouble negotiating traffic right now through this part of the racetrack. This is a very tricky part of the racetrack, I can see from this vantage point. Well, you're right, Jeff Hammond. Uh, I mean, you, you're going at a straight line on the brake hard, almost making a 90-degree turn into turn one. We see Randy LaJoy in the seven. He's back on pit road. And you mentioned it in the pre-race. It's what we call an off-camber core almost, which means it ha the banking is almost the opposite direction. It's a very trick, tricky corner to get through. Right here, we're looking at a shot where you come across the start-finish line there right at the scoring tower, and once you turn down into turn one, you're almost continuing to turn all the way till you get to the back stretch. Just you never quit turning the race car. This this track is a mile race track, but you're only holding the wheel straight for just a few seconds. Yeah, as we said, Larry, a lot of guys refer to this place as a road course. The back stretch goes downhill, front stretch goes uphill. Let's go back down to Dick Bergen to update Randy LaJoy. Dick? Well, Randy LaJoy has pitted one more time. He was involved in a jingle on the speedway, and as much as he'd already pitted, they decided to bring him back in again, straighten out some of the sheet metal as we have a green flag on the speedway. All right, thanks, Dick. Kevin Harvick leading for the seventh time this year, and Larry, he has led four laps than any driver in NASCAR Bush Series competition. And that all is part of why he's leading these points as well. Remember, every lap you lead, even if there's one lap a race, it's five bonus points. If you lead the most laps, it's an extra five bonus points. Tony Rain still looking good in the 33. Larry, I wonder, wonder, did he let Harvick go by him so he could follow him for a while or just decided I'm just going to cool it a little bit here? Well, I've got to believe this early in the race, his spotter, his crew chief, was telling him, look, Kevin Harvick looks like he's got a pretty fast race car. He keeps getting to the inside of him. You've led your lap. Let's get behind him. We don't want to get ourselves in trouble this early in the race. We need, a, we need to finish another race, and we need another good finish. Jeff Green uh, lurking, we should say, back there in that yellow number 10, Larry. He's, he's got, always lurking. And he's got eight starts at this racetrack, two poles. He's led 175 laps and has four top five. Everything but victory lane, right? <laughs> Everything but that. Best finish here, a third. Take a look at Greg Biffle in the fifth position. Goes by David Donahue. And there's Bobby Hamilton Jr. in the 26 right behind him. And then the 27 of McMurray draws up. Now, David Donahue in the 25 car, he cut a right front tire down right before that caution came out. And he spent several laps on pit road. He's four laps down. McMurray in the 27 still looking for his first top 10. He replaced Casey Atwood in that number 27 at the beginning of the year. They've been a little disappointed with their performance. Yeah, again, it's been kind of hit and miss. He's had a few good runs, but, yeah, they've had a lot of disappointments this year. Larry, how hard is it for a young driver and a team? We talked about Tony Rain finally closing well. You know, it's one thing to start well. You've got to close well. Well, and that's something, you know, with the two and a half years that I spent with the 31 team and Mike Skinner, that I was always concerned about. It's like we had a good start pitcher. We could come out of the bullpen somewhere in the middle of the race and still do okay, but we never could close the deal at the end of the race. That's something that's hard to do because keeping up with racetrack changes, making the right adjustments, something you have to do almost everywhere we race, it's hard to do. You need that goose gossip coming out of the pen, closing that baseball game key. you got to have it. And Tony Raines, he's slipping back here. Uh, Jeff Green in the 10 car, Jason Keller in the 57 car, they've kicked him back to fourth position. 
you know, Jason Keller, I watched him yesterday after he qualified, and he qualifies in, in row two, and he's disappointed, Larry. Well, that's, again, that's the reason he's a champion. That's the reason he ran races. That's the reason he won the championship by as many <laughs> points as he won it last year. You know, we talked about strategy. Uh, again, all these guys elected to stay out on the racetrack, and I'm not surprised that they did it for tires because you only get two sets of tires to change under caution. So like Randy LaJoy, he's got to run about 180 laps on the set of tires he has on the car right now, plus one more set. You can change all you want under green, but NASCAR says you only got two sets to change under caution. Randy LaJoy there in the seventh car. He does have a victory on this racetrack, one here in 1996 led 110 laps of competition. And the fresh tires are working pretty well right now. Here he's racing the, the 54 car. That's Kelly Dent for the 24th position. He restarted way back in about 30th, so he's moving forward for those fresh tires. But the further you go to the front, the harder it gets to pass. <laughs> exactly right. Kevin Harvick continues to lead in that number two car. And, you know, Larry, he said, hey, you guys in the media are making too big a deal out of this double duty thing. I'm having fun. I'm getting on jets, flying back and forth. He said he likes it. Well, let me tell you something. I did double duty this weekend, and I didn't <laughs> have to drive good, a I race car. Add. Well, I may be looking good and sounding good, but I'm feeling a little tired, so there's more to this double duty. But, but I only had to make the trip once. He made the tri round trip twice. It's, it's not an easy deal to do. No, it's not, and his schedule is going to get pretty hairy coming up here in the summer months. You know, he's only 25 years old, but let's take a look at your schedule, Larry McReynolds. Oh, me. <laughs> I'm scared to look at it. <laughs> what time did you hit the rack last night? It was about 3.30, quarter to 4, and, and you know, I think still the excitement from the Winston, I uh, I couldn't go to sleep when I laid down. <laughs> it says right there, they seem kind of tired. <laughs> I bet I won't have to count many sheep tonight. No, no, I don't think so. <laughs> All right, we're working lap number 34 of 200 here at Nazareth. Kevin Harvick continues to lead. He's followed by Jeff Green and Jason Keller. You're watching NASCAR on FX. Kevin Harvick continuing to lead the Nazareth 200 in that number two car. He has led the most laps in three races this year. 86 laps at Bristol, 114 at Texas, and 165 at Loudoun, although he didn't win. Let's go to Dick Bergman. And we're eavesdropping on the uh, radio for Kevin Harvick and also for second place Jeff Green. Harvick is simply being told, be careful of the traffic. The business of closing at high speed on some of these poor cars is really beginning to bother Harvick and his crew. Meanwhile, Jeff Green's crew is telling him that Harvick is coming to him. The gap is narrowing. And he's also been told, wear him out, meaning wear Harvick out. Let's go to Jeff. Well, Dick, all I can say right now is last week's winner, Jason Keller, is doing about the same thing as second place and teammate Jeff Green. He's very patiently just monitoring the guys out front and Steve Addington and Jason have been talking. The car is just a little bit tight, but he says it's coming to him, and they're just very patiently trying to wear them down. And Steve Addington told Jason, it's a long, long way, guys. Just save your tires and be patient. Jason Keller, just 30 years old, but that is one attribute that I really like about him, Larry. He is patient. Yes, he is, and, and that's the reason he's been running at the end of so many races. I think he had quite a streak until he was involved in a wreck here just a few races ago, but that's the reason he's also in the points chase year in and year out. Seven top tens, four top fives on the season for Keller. Meanwhile, Tony Raines running in the fourth position, followed by Greg Biffle in fifth. My amazed, I think more than you are, Larry, that the Biffle has made such a smooth transition. Not even a smooth transition, a great transition to this series. Well, uh, again, he had, he's got a great race team behind him. Let's face it, even though there's a lot of different players, this is the race car that Mark Martin vacated that won so many Bush Grand National races in. So he didn't step into a, 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 a bad ride by no means. He stepped into a great ride, but he brings a lot of talent. In, in the truck series, he, he just... He was there every week. It didn't matter where they was racing. He was there, and he was up front leading races. Larry, he was super aggressive. 
especially for the Crux series. And, you know, DW has described him as relentless. Do you think he's modified his, his uh, style, if you will? Well, I think he's done a great job at it. If, if he hadn't modified it, he would not be sitting fourth in points. That's a good telltale sign that he's, he's figured out the fine line there between aggressive and too aggressive. Okay. No when to hold them, no when to hold them. Exactly. You've got to do that in this series, especially here at a racetrack like Nazareth. We're going to hear it a lot today. Race the racetrack, race the element. Here, Kevin Harvick is racing lap traffic right now. Going by the number eight car of Jeff Falk. You know, something we failed to mention, we may have talked about it. Yeah, he was here yesterday morning. He practiced, he qualified the car, but in final practice, he was on his way back to Charlotte. He did not really practice this car and race trim after qualifying. The car practice, yeah. Mike Bliss practiced the race car for this guy. And it was funny, Larry, in the garage yesterday, as I said, NASCAR let those three guys qualify first, second, and third in the order they went out. And they literally ran to a van, as Kevin Harvick works traffic there, but they ran to a van. I mean, it was pretty heck. Oh, yes, and I, look how close 10 car Jeff Green has closed up to him. Not because he's that much faster. Lap traffic, catching the lap traffic in the right place. And Jason Keller, he's right on Jeff Green's bumper. Jason Keller in the 57 car. At Nazareth, Jeff Green, as we said, has had great success. Four top five finishes. Best finish is the third. He wants to get in the victory lane today. Kevin Harvick leading, trying to go by rookie Larry Foyt. Jeff Green right behind him, Larry. <laughs> and Jason Keller right behind him. And lap traffic makes it very interesting. We've completed 47 laps of 200 here in Nazareth. We'll be right back on FX. Harvick still leading, but this isn't fair. I mean, Larry's only had about two and a half hours of sleep, and i got to give him the trivia question. Well, I'll go ahead anyways, Larry. Jeff Green and Kevin Harvick have 10 top 10 finishes in the first 12 Bush Series races this season. What is the record for the most top 10 finishes in a Bush Series season? I think you're asking me, Daryl. I'm not asking up here. you. Oh, okay. i got to believe it was, I don't know the number, but I'm going to take a shot in the dark. It was Jeff Green last year. Uh, that is incorrect. Do you remember the Darryl, famous I need some help. the famous Sam Ard? Oh, I thought we was talking about. Oh, I thought we was talking about modern day era. That's modern. Oh, okay. That's modern. Okay. It's, it's, it's the beginning of the modern era. It's not modern for me. Thirty in 1983. 83. That's kind of modern. Battle for fourth and fifth. Tony Reigns in the 33. Greg Biffle in the 60. I believe Jeff Green had 23 of them last year. It's amazing. Whatever it was, it was a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Kenny Wallace has had an amazing weekend as we look at his windshield. Larry, on Friday, you noticed we were on the air that that 27 truck had pulled in the garage area there at Charlotte. He said he was building a pitching machine for his daughters, and his cell phone went off, went off and they said, hey, man, get to the racetrack. We're going to try and qualify for the Winston. Yeah, I think we was calling it Kenny's Big Adventure. Yeah, excellent but he, he qualified 10th. Now, unlike... The two car of Kevin Harvick or the 26 car Bobby Hamilton Jr., they elected not to run this car in race practice yesterday without Kenny Wallace here to drive this race car. Now, even though Kenny has never won here, best finish a third, his crew chief, Jared Cannon, has two wins here. 1989 with Bobby Hillen and last year with Ron Hornaday. They like this race car. They ran this car two weeks ago at Richmond, last week at Loudoun. This is the third week in a row that they ran this race car. Now, Kenny Wallace having a good season in that number 48 car. And there's, let's update Ted Christopher in the 21. He's filling in for Mike Skinner. You know, his driving style is similar to Mike Skinner. Very similar. Dick Bergman, what, what are they saying about the 21 car? Well, he's doing a good job with it. What they are telling him, in essence, is let the car roll through the corner. Don't use quite so much brake. TC has got a lot of experience on this racetrack in a modified. Indeed, he is on the pole for this afternoon's modified race here, but very little experience with these big, heavy cars. And you can just toss one of those modifieds around. Takes a lot more finesse here, and he told me this morning he does need to calm himself down, and he does need to roll with it. That's what the crew's telling him, too. But you got to tip your hat not only to Ted Christopher, but to this race team, Richard Childress Racing, Gil Martin, 
started the season with Mike Dillon. The last six races, Mike Skinner has been in that car, and out of six races, five top ten finishes. Now, it's no, no longer is driver points an issue for this race team with their third different driver, but in the owner points, which is very important, when Mike Skinner took the car over, they was like 29th in owner points after six races coming in here to Nazareth. They're in the top ten in owner points. So the race team's doing their job, too. Absolutely. Mike Skinner replacing Mike Dillon, we should add. I believe that took place at Nashville. Now, a little while ago, Greg Biffle in the 60 gets by Tony Raines in the 33. Boy, look That's at Raines. He got loose, though, Steve. He got loose up off the corner. You've seen him fighting that steering wheel. Had to get back off the throttle. Biffle carries the momentum down the front stretch. Yeah, and Biffle never hesitated. Would jump right into that fourth position. He took advantage of a situation. Yes, he did. I heard DW saying last night in the Winston, you can't wait for an opening. You have to take a shot at a crack. You just can't wait. Especially in the Winston. <laughs> Maybe a little early here on lap yeah. 60 at Nazareth. Yeah, right. Tell those guys that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kevin Harvick does continue to lead, followed by Jeff Green in the 10, Jason Keller in the 57, Biffle in that 60, Tony Raines in the number 33 car. Bobby Hamilton Jr., he should add, in the 6th position, followed by Jamie McMurray, Jimmy Johnson in the 92, Tim Fidewa is in that ninth position. Remember, he's won here twice in the 37, Kevin Grubb. It's a good solid run for Kevin Grubb. Started 12th, good qualifying effort, and he's up to 10th. He's got quite a battle right here. we got a, a conglomerate of race cars. I like that word, conglomerate. Yeah. And the reason we got a conglomerate, these guys are trying to stay on the lead lap because Kevin Harvick, the leader, he's all over the back of these cars. Look at him, three wide. Kevin, you got to get back in line. It's too early to be doing that. Oh, working lap traffic. 63, Shane Hall, he moves over. Clay Rogers, the 17, he gets out of the way. Harvick goes by Shane Hall. Jeff Green now trying to get by Hall. We now have 22 cars on the lead lap. Uh, so here at lap 63, Kevin Harvick, Jeff Green, they're picking them up and laying them down, putting them a lap down. The 54 car of Kelly Denton is, in fact, the last car on the lead lap. Kevin Harvick continues to lead the Nazareth 200. He's followed by Jeff Green and his teammate, Jason Keller. Hey, we'll be right back. Hey, next weekend we have a lot of racing in Charlotte qualifying on Thursday night. Wichita Cup qualifying. That's followed by the Goodies Dash Race. On Saturday, these very same NASCAR Push Series drivers in the CarQuest Auto Parts 300 will also have happy hour practice. And then next Sunday, it's NASCAR this morning with John Roberts. And the Coca-Cola 600 will be on at 5 o'clock for that race. For the Coca-Cola 600, the longest race the Winston Cup cars run. Starts about 5, 5.30 in the afternoon, sun's out, racetrack's hot, ends at night. A moody racetrack. Let's go down to Jeff Hammond. He's got news on Tony Raines. That's right, Steve. Talk to Michael Kaitalisic, crew chief on that car, and he says, hey, everything's going to be all right. The car's just a little bit what they call pushy loose. If you notice when he got past that last time, the car actually was so tight in the center, Tony was trying to turn it. He made it get loose coming up off the corner, which allowed the 60 car of Biffle to get by him. He said first time they get a chance to come in, which they're predicting of the round of lap 100. If they don't have any cautions, they'll make that adjustment. Should get Tony back up to the front. Jeff, I just saw Tony Raines wiggle coming off four. You know, interesting at this racetrack, Larry, the pole sitter has only gone on to win once in 13 races. Elliot Sadler did that back in 1997. Well, we're seeing that more and more, not only just in Bush, but in Winston Cup. I don't think a single pole sitter this year in Winston Cup has won a race that the fastest race car always wins a race. Kevin Harvick is still leading. He's starting to pull away a little bit from Jeff Green. Harvick, you know, he's another guy whose style you can describe as relentless. Talked about Greg Biffle. And uh, so far today, those two have played nice. The 60 can't get to the two. No, but Kevin Harvick, you're right. I, I mean, he drives a race car hard. Uh, their driving styles, they remind me yeah. a lot. And they get everything out of that race car. They can get every single, not only just race lap, you watch them in practice. They're out there getting, they're on top of that wheel, getting everything they can out of that race car. Well, Kevin Harvick won that race in Atlanta earlier this season. Uh, it, the Winston Cup start. You know, he, 
Larry, when he pitted, I was working their pitch. They didn't make many adjustments all day. They just kept slapping on tires, and he'd go out and drive the wheels off that thing. And he's a calm driver for the most part. You monitor him, I monitor him. He don't say a whole lot on that radio. And you know, this guy, he, he has such a season going for it. A lot for the reasons that none of us wanted to see, but yes, he could, he could win the Bush Grand National Championship. He could win the Winston Cup Rookie of the Year, and he could very easily finish in the top ten in Winston Cup driver points. An important issue here also, Larry, and you know this so well. Yes, he is in good equipment. He's in Richard Childress' Bush car. You know, he's in Dale Earnhardt's car as well. But you have to get the job done. Great, you're in great equipment. You've got to get the job done. You've got to screw somebody down in that seat that, that can mash that gas and turn the steering wheel and do it all together. And emotionally, Kevin Harvick, a young guy, just 25 years old, you know, that's an awful lot of pressure to put on anybody, much less an inexperienced driver. But he's handling it as, as good as I believe anybody could handle it. And, and he had a complicated weekend this weekend. It's going to get more complicated here in a few weeks. Winston Cup car at Pocono, Bush Grand National car at Kentucky, on into July. Winston Cup car at Daytona Beach, Bush Grand National car at Watkins Glen. It's going to get more complicated. Yeah, then he's got Pikes Peak on July 28th, Pocono July 29th. And he'll also run Memphis October 13th, Martinsville October 14th. And, you know, DW's point is, when it gets hot, that's when it's going to start wearing on him. But he is young, and, and that's gonna, that could certainly help. And he is in good shape. Yes, he is. Kevin Harvick has led 64 laps here, the Nazareth 200, 64 of 77. 20 cars on the lead lap. He's only had one caution for four laps. It came out when Bill Hoff in the 93 made contact with the wall. With Kevin Harvick continuing to lead, we'll take a quick break. We'll be back for the last 120 laps of the Nazareth 200. Kevin Harvick has led 69 of 82 laps here at Nazareth. You know, Larry, we ought to talk about Bobby Hamilton Jr. riding in the sixth position. I interviewed him Friday when we were doing qualifying for the Winston Open in Charlotte, and I said, man, you're 23 years old, you've grown up watching racing, and here you are with the biggest stars in the sport. Are you nervous? And he said, oh, yeah, man, I felt like I wanted to puke. <laughs> and every time I talk to him, I still look at him and say, you sure you're old enough to be driving a race car? <laughs> But yeah, I mean, the thing that's different from him and Kenny Wallace, Kenny Wallace, Kevin Harvick has known for several months what their schedule is going to be. Bobby Hamilton Jr. didn't find out until the middle of the week. And of course, we heard him in the pre-race talk about the World 600, the longest race. Even though it cools down running under the lights, that's 900 miles he's going to try to run next weekend. So he's young, but he better be young. He better be ready for doing this. Bobby Hamilton Jr. came in here 17th in the points, but he's just 123 points out of the 10th position. He's one of those cars that their whole team, they qualify good each week. They've had some good runs. They've kind of at times had trouble. We talked about it earlier with Tony Raines getting that closer in them, being there the first, middle, and end of the race, and, and combining it all together on one given day. Yeah, he sat on the pole at California, but finished 14th, and, and you're right, they just haven't put the whole package together. And when they put it together, you better look out, just like we're, we're having to keep a close watch on Tony <laughs> Rains right now. Kevin Harvick still leading, but Jeff Green's not that far back, Larry. Bobby Hamilton Jr.'s crew wants him to get up into the mix, and we'll find out right ahead. Kevin Harvick has led 78 laps now out of 200. Second and third place still occupied by Jeff Green and Jason Keller. Larry, are we starting to look at pit stops? Well, we, we've got to be. We're at lap 91. It's going to be interesting in this next nine laps to see who comes to pit road. And right now, David Green in the 34 car, he seems to be the first one on pit road. And who waits to close to lap to 100? They go close to lap 100. We know they're the ones that maybe can make it, should it stay green the rest of the way without stopping. Everybody should be coming to pit road, four tires, full of fuel. That's going to be important. Get that car full of fuel. Long pit road here. And you just got to make sure and have a good solid stop. 35 miles an hour on pit road. It takes a long time. You'll go a couple laps down here just making the pit stop under green. Keith Plaza, Robert Ballot, Valentis and changing tires. I can't get out of the habit of calling those pit crew guys. Ain't. And wasn't that neat last night when they introduced all the over-the-wall guys?
the Wista Cup team. That was awesome. Well, obviously, the whole crew for those race teams talk about Jeff Gordon's crew again. Unloads that backup car. Yeah, Jeff Gordon did a well of a job on that racetrack, but that group didn't panic. Unloaded that backup car. They made the big difference. Looks like Ted Christopher in the 21 car. He's going to be coming to pit road. Now, what's going to be interesting, that's Kevin Harvick's teammate. How much longer will Kevin Harvick be able to stay out there? Will he be able to make this race on one stop should it stay green? Let's go down to Dick Bergeron. Well, here comes Teddy Christopher in, the first of the guys who have a legitimate shot to really win this thing. Christopher, in his biggest day ever in this series, this is the best ride he has ever had. He is hoping to turn it into something a whole lot more. His crew, a very experienced crew, doing a four-tire change, hoping that this set's going to be the set that'll take Christopher to victory in a 15.6. Here comes the 10 car as well. Jeff Green, who has been running in second place most of this day. His car has been a little bit loose going in. He stops well into the back end of his pit to give himself plenty of room to pull out if he has got to do that. And someone parks in front of him. Meanwhile, Harvick's guys are also ready. Harvick has led most of the race today. Let's go to Jeff. That's right, Dick. Right now, we're looking at uh, Jason Keller's crew. They're down and putting four tires on. They sprung into action. Jack Man back around the car real quickly. A little bit of problem on the left front. Back to you, Dick. Harvick is in. He's a little bit tight from the middle out. He has led most of the going today, but let's remember that last week in New Hampshire, he led more laps than anybody. And it was a pit stop decision. Two tires instead of four that wound up costing him the race. Today, on this stop, it's four tires. 16-8 for Harvick. Greg Biffle also making his way to pit road, the 26 of Bobby Hamilton Jr. getting service. Now, one thing that's unique about this pit road, they have an access road that comes off turn three. They have to go on, they can't come right off on turn four. Jeff Hammond. Let's see Greg Biffle bringing his car down pit road. Randy Goss called out and said, get five points and let's get hit pit road, get four tires. If you notice something else, Larry McReynolds, a lot of brake dust, a lot of brake dust also. As I see this car, they come around the car here and get ready to put four tires. We look down also to the 33 cars making a track bar just right now on the right side of their car. As we said earlier, he's extremely tight right in the center, and those guys are trying to get the job done. They're having trouble with left rear. This is going to be a slow stop. This is going to really mean a disaster for our whole center, Tony Ray. Yeah, you just can't give up that much time on a green flag stop. You see him leaving him pit road. Again, this is access road going out. You won't come back on the racetrack to all the way around there turn two. If you happen to miss the access road and stay on the racetrack and cut across the grass, it's a one-lap penalty. Tim Feeder won the 66. He had inherited the lead, but he's on pit road and lap Nanny as well. Here he's on that access road coming to pit road. Pit road speed starts right there. There you see they really take as much advantage as they can get the pit road to hit that pit road speed. Tim Fidoa started in the 11th position, had worked his way inside the top 10. We told you at the start of the race, Tim Fidoa, the only Bush Series driver to win more than one race. Let's go to Jeff Hammond. Again, who brings the team, Tim Fidoa, a former winner. He brings it down into the pit road. His crew goes to work. I mean, those guys right now, they know that this right here is what's going to be different whether they win or lose. They made a quick adjustment to the wedge, it looked like, on that particular car. Now the back around the left side, and I'm telling you right now, that jack man, if he doesn't hustle around, this stop's going to be slowing and look pretty good. 17-5, a good stop for the 10 feet away. He's away. So Jeff, Jimmy Johnson pulled in just behind feet away, or pulled onto the racetrack just behind him. Elton Sawyer in the 98 also making a stop. And we just crossed the halfway point, lap 100. Kevin Grubb in the 37 car had inherited the lead. He's on pit road, and that gives the lead to Jeff Purvis in the 18 car. Kevin Grubb, 35 miles an hour to attention of his pit crew. Now, again, Kevin Grubb, Jeff Purvis, these guys, they, that tells me they can go the distance on what they've got. Jeff Hammond, how about Kevin Grubb? Larry, early on, if you remember, I think they came in and made a little adjustment car. It looks like he's coming in here, slides to a stop. Again, his crew just goes, springs and works. Right front guy. The one thing I'm noticing all these cars, Larry, the brake dust, excessive brake dust. These guys have been out there under sustained green flag conditions, and they're using a lot of brake here. That may be an issue before the end of the day. Yeah, I saw a lot of brake opening to cool the brakes. Again, you pull a pretty high gear here. You carry a lot of speed getting down into these corners, especially turn three and turn one. Hard on the brake, a lot of brake usage. 
Now, Jeff, Jeff Purvis, he's on pit road, lap 102. Again, I called Doug Richards a fuel mileage king because two of the last three Bush races, they've been working a fuel mileage strategy. And remember in California, he and Hank Parker went a long way. Let's go to Dick. Yeah, Purvis went 124 miles in California, and he has already gone 102 laps. He'll have no problem making the second half of this race. Purvis now on pit road. Shane Westenberg is going to change front tires. Dave Hansen on the back. Wrench in the back end. Two rounds in the left rear. Gas man Jim Gilbert. Purvis running some RPMs. The exchange of gas cans is complete. Purvis so far slow on the front. Very slow on the front of the car. AT flat, the key was they wanted to get every bit of gas in. That is why they were slow. They waited for the gas man, Jim Gilbert. He has got a full load of fuel. Purvis, who knows? He might win the race on this strategy. Well, now they pitted lap 102, but remember, five of those laps was under caution, and two caution laps equal like one green flag lap. Should it stay green, that means he's going to have to run 98 green flag laps. But guess who's leading the race? We talked about it, Randy LaJoy. And, and we know he's going to make a pit stop here in probably about 10 or 15 laps, and he can go the distance. The problem, before the leaders pitted, he was only three seconds in front of the leaders from being lapped. Randy LaJoy won here in 1996, but right now it's Kevin Harvick having his way. You're watching the NASA 200 on FX. Randy LaJoy in that number seven car is your leader. Kevin Harvick, who has led a lot of this race, 84 laps, is in second. Now, LaJoy is a story. Why? Well, he's on pit road, and this is going to be part of the story. The only reason he's going to be a part of the story, should we stay green the rest of the way, we know this would be his final pit stop. He's got problems coming on the pit road, trying to get around the eight car of Jeff Falk here. Cost him a lot of time coming to pit road. LaJoy said... I'm not waiting for you, son. I'm going through the grass. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's wide open Do you get to the entrance of Pit Road. Dick Murphy. The surprise here is that they are planning to make this a two-tire stop rather than a four-tire stop. They are, of course, pitting under the green flag, but then again, so has everybody else pitted under the green flag. Indeed, 13-9, there goes the joy. Not the best stop for just two tires. All right, thanks very much, Dick. Randy LaJoy adhering to the Pit Road speed. That means Kevin Harvick now has the lead. And, and the real story there is the, his guys, they got him off pit road very fast. Jeff Green got caught up in traffic. He was about three or four seconds behind Kevin Harvick when he got back on the racetrack up to speed. And then Ke Jeff Green got caught up in traffic. He lost over a second and a half in about three laps. Right now, he's over six seconds behind Kevin Harvick. Kevin Harvick back in front of Jeff Green, Jason Keller, Greg Biffle, and Tony Raines rides fifth. You're watching the NASA 200 on FX. Welcome back to Nazareth. The caution flag flying for the second time. It was unfurled on lap 116. The good news is there aren't any torn up race cars. The bad news is there's debris on the racetrack. Who does this help, Larry? But the story is strategy. Kevin Harvick, that group, we, they put all but 10 cars down a lap. Now, we know that the top 10 cars that's on the lead lap, all of those guys hitted early enough that we knew they had to be on pit road one more time. The pit road was closed that time by. I got to believe with only 10 cars on the lead lap, those guys will come to pit road and build the insurance that should we stay green, that they can go the distance. Now, two cars we know that didn't have to stop, Randy LaJoy and Jeff Purvis in particular, they're a lap down. Maybe they can stay at the front. Randy LaJoy, he should be able to line up in front of the pack, get that lap back should we get another quick caution. I don't know if he's got a fast enough race car, especially with two tires, to get his lap back. And I don't know if anybody's going to catch Kevin Harvick anyways. Pit Road is open, and they are coming to Pit Road. Kevin Harvick, Jeff Green, Jason Keller. Again, reason being, they've only been out there about 16 or 18 laps is to get those tanks full of fuel. We may only see gas and go. We may possibly see two tires put on. What would you do, Larry? I believe I'd put two tires on and fill that thing up with fuel. Let's go to Dick Berger. Dick? 
Well, Kevin Harvick is going to make a tire change, and what they are going to do is try and adjust the pressure so they are essentially identical to the pressures he had when he started the race. Meanwhile, the 10-car green has had to go around Kevin Harvick in order to get into his pit stall, and he had made the decision along with his crew that no matter what Harvick did, he was going to come in for four tires. Remember, these guys get two sets of tires for this race under caution. This is the first real caution flag change that we have seen. The depth. Wow, Harvick's gone. Bobby Hamilton Jr. comes in and makes his pit stop where his car is still too tight. They're also making adjustments on the 57 car of Jason Keller. His car is down and away. They've made four tires on it. 33 and Tony Reigns. Again, he's still tight in the center. making track bar adjustments on that car on the left-hand side. As you look here, Bobby Hamilton Jr. making an adjustment on the windshield, getting clean. He's down and away. And Jimmy Johnson comes roaring past. So how's this all going to shake out, Larry Mack? Well, I, what I was trying to figure out is how many of those 10 cars came to Pitt Road. I know I saw at least eight of them. McMurray also came in in the 27. He was running in the eighth position. No matter what, it's going to get interesting. <laughs> and we're going to find out how it plays out right after this. Damn. Greg Biffle is leading the Nazareth 200 followed by Tim Fiedewa. Now, Larry, let's talk about, let's sort this all out for the fans. Well, we had we had 10 cars on the lead lap. We had three of those cars that elected not to pit. Greg Biffle in the 60 car, Tim Fiedewa in the 66, and Rich Bickle in the 59. Now, since that caution came out on lap 115, we're going to go back racing here at lap 120. That's five caution laps. The same amount of caution laps we ran in that first 100 laps. Now, Biffle and Bickle was on pit road at lap 96. That's 104 laps to go. But the guy we're going to watch, Tim Fiedel, well, he was on pit road at lap 99. I feel good that they can go the distance. The distance. Let's check in with Jeff Hammond. Jeff? Guys, early on in the race, Greg Biffle called in and told his crew chief, hey, if I can ever get this thing to the front, I can leave out of here. I believe I got a car I can win the race with. Well, they finally got into the front, and they said, hey, we got enough gas. I'm where I want to be. Leave me alone. Here. Randy Goss feels like that what he saw as far as coming in, he was coming in on like lap 96. There was enough fuel left as far as the mileage is concerned to get him the rest of the distance as far as the three laps that were coming up short. There's no question, with only 18 laps on those tires, I like being at the front of the pack as long as I know I got enough fuel in the tank. Larry, and I just saw it too. Tim Fiedewa got sideways, and we have a car in the wall. The 48 of Kenny Wallace has hit very hard. Caution will come out again on lap 121. They just had had a lengthy pit stop with that car. The car was hung in gear, and they, they got it hung out of gear and uh, put him way back in the pack. Now, here's Tim Sauter in 61 car. He's going to try to get one of his two laps back. So does Jeff Purvis. He gets his lap back. And, Larry, I was just about to finish saying Fiedewa got squirrely, got real loose coming off four and looked up in the 48. Well, look at the damage to that car. Kenny Wallace in the wall hard. That was a hard hit. See if we can see exactly what happened to Kenny Wallace in that 48 car, Larry. Remember, he was deep in the field. The car gets a little sideways in front of him. That looked like Mike McLaughlin. Boy, he hits that wall hard. You just can't. I mean, that's almost like a straight on hit. Had a big old head of steam when he went into the wall. Don't know if he got help from behind. Just seen some cars had to check up because of Mike McLaughlin. Looked like he got a little squirrely and had to get out of the throttle. But there's the best sign oh, in the yeah. world. Steering wheel up on the dash and uh, wind the net down. Well, one thing about it, Larry, you can go home with your feelings hurt. If, you know, tomorrow you'll be okay. The good thing is he's healthy. He looks healthy. He's got one of the head and neck restraint devices on. You see it wrapped around his chest there and over his shoulders. Boy, he's had, again, Kenny's big adventures. It's just not going to end very nice. You know, they didn't find out until 1 o'clock in the afternoon on Friday that Geico was, in fact, going to sponsor him for the Winston Open. They hustled up, got the truck down there, and Kenny said, uh, you know, I drove up here like a hillbilly to the Mecca of Speed, the Lowe's Motor Speedway there in Charlotte. But uh, 
boy, just an amazing adventure. He said we could make a movie of his life this season. I think we have an in-car view. Don't know if I want to look. Coming off turn four, down the front straightaway, you saw Mike McLaughlin in the 20 get squirrely there. Boy, you just almost got to believe he got some help from behind. Yeah, it Didn't turns. see anything going on in front of him. This is out of the 20 car of Mike McLaughlin. Jamie McMurray in the 27 car, but I'm, I'm not completely sure he did anything really wrong. No, I mean, they definitely made contact, the 27 and the 48, but it looked almost as though Kenny Wallace cut across his bow, Larry. Jamie was holding his line. Well, we're working caution for the third time this afternoon. We'll get the racetrack cleaned up and come back for the completion of the Nazareth 200. Good. Like NASCAR on FX is brought to you by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Light. Bush, the proud sponsor of the NASCAR Bush Series. We're under caution for the third time this afternoon. There you see Kenny Wallace's car, hard contact into the wall. Lap 121 is when the caution came out. Let's take a look at what happened again, Larry. This is going to be looking out the back of Mike McLaughlin's car. Coming off turn four here. This is coming down the front stretch. You're going to see him wiggle right here. He gets loose, jumps up in the high groove. See, there he wiggles up in the high groove from a Jamie McMurray, the 27 car. Now, Kenny Wallace is to the bottom here, right here. Now, they're going to make contact, but, boy, I can't say Jamie McMurray went down on him in the 27 car. Yeah, I don't want to place blame on anyone. They definitely made contact, but hard to tell. Well, we, we've talked about that corner. Jeff Hammond yeah. talked about that corner. That's a tricky corner. You're running so fast, you get on the brake, then you're almost making a 90-degree turn. Track workers continuing to get this racetrack race ready. We have completed 126 of 200 laps. Greg Biffle is leading. We're working heavy traffic here at Nazareth. Let's go down to Dick Bergen with Kenny Wallace. Kenny, we were glad to see you walk out of that thing. What happened? Man, first of all, I want to give everybody my excuse while I was back there. We, uh, you know, we were running about ninth there and made that green flight pit stop, and the car was hung up in fourth gear. I was beating it, banging it, couldn't get it out of, out of fourth, so lost a lot of time and got down a lap there. And um, I don't know, you know, I mean, I know what happened. You know, you know, you used to explain. I'm a good racer, so. Uh, we just uh, we just got together going through the trial. Well, they're tight head headquarters basically, and uh, you know um, it was on film. Y'all seen it? I mean, it was just tight. It was nobody's fault. Such a hard, hard hit. Yeah. How did you get out of that thing without getting hurt somehow? Right here, um, I want to thank Richard Childress Racing. Everybody seen on the uh, Winston last night. Bobby Hutchins at, at uh, Richard Childress Racing. He designed that, and it hooks onto the helmet here and uh, keeps you from uh, you know snapping your stem out of your head so uh i'm okay just pride's hurt you know i don't like wrecking <laughs> no and he doesn't wreck all that often either let's go to jeff yeah, that's right dick and uh, as kenny said hey it was racing but jamie murray did call in and tell his crew that when he got down into the corner that kenny got on the brakes a little bit too hard and he couldn't do anything about it and he did get into him he was sorry about it but as they say it's close racing here at nazareth and sometimes that does happen well, close quarters racing, as Kenny Wallace said. Greg Biffle is the leader. Tim Fidewa is second. Kevin Harvick is third. Rich Bickle fourth. And Jeff Green fifth. Closing in on the end of the 200. June 
and it's the return of Fox Saturday Baseball as Juan Gonzalez looks to continue his torrid start for the Indians against Derek Jeter and the defending world champion Yankees. Or two National League powers collide when Gary Sheffield and the Dodgers battle Jeff Bagwell and the Astros or other regional action. Watch the entire baseball season unfold across the Fox networks. Let's go to Jeff Hammond, our slugger. <laughs> well, Steve, sometimes you like to say, do you feel lucky? Well, Randy Goss, you guys made a pretty gutsy call right there. How things look? Well, I don't know how they look. We'll see how it plays out. Uh, we're close on gas mileage, so these cautions are helping us. Uh, we're about the same. The top five cars are all about the same speed. So uh, that's the only way we thought we could get in front of those guys. So we'll see how it plays. Well, early on in the race, we heard you guys talking and it said that, uh, hey, if we ever could get to the front, I think we'll be okay, and you're there now, but a few seconds ago, I thought NASCAR was going to put you to the back of the field for starting too soon. Yeah, we jumped the start a little bit, just because there's so much buildup on the outside of the track here, we're trying to get on the bottom and not wreck our car. Tough little racetrack, isn't it? It's tough. It's a driver's racetrack, and uh, Greg's been really focused today, so uh, he's up on it. Well, good luck the rest of the way. Boy, you talk about chemistry. Randy Goss, Greg Biffle. Randy was Greg's crew chief in the truck series and uh, won the championship, won a bunch of races. So chemistry right from the beginning this year. Big plus Greg Biffle going into this first year in Bush Grand National. Yeah, good point, Larry. And I think we mentioned earlier, Greg Biffle won a truck race here from the pole in 1999. Yes, he did. So he, he knows how to win here. But, yeah, I, I think now, they again, I want to set it up. They pitted on lap 96. Since they pitted, we have had 15 caution laps. Now 16. That's like buying eight laps. So I, I feel that they, if they run 96 laps the first time, the more cautions they run, the safer they get. But I feel like they're, they're more than safe. We've had three cautions. The most recent coming out on lap 121. When Kenny Wallace hit the wall hard, but he's okay. Greg Biffle trying to nail down his second win of the season. The green flag has just been waved on lap 134. It's Greg Biffle leading Tim Fiedewa, Kevin Harvick in the two, and Rich Fickle in the 59. Jeff Green rides fifth. And the goal of those top three was to get by that lap car of Ashton Lewis, who started on the inside, and they accomplished it before they got over to turn two. Let's take a look at what happened on the restart. Donahue on the 25, gets into the back of Kelly Denton in the 54. But it's like cars in front of Kelly Denton didn't go, so he couldn't go. Right. No caution. Greg Biffle, the 2000 NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series champion, trying to nail down his second one of the year. He won in Nashville on April 14th at just his 10th Bush Series start. And, and right now, he's got clear racetrack. His car is working good. He's got almost a second lead over Tim Fedewa. He's going to be over Kevin Harvick here in a second. Kevin Harvick keeps working that inside of Tim Fedewa. I believe he's a little faster, but this racetrack is so hard to pass. Watching out of the, through the windshield of Kevin Harvick's number two car. As he draws up on Tim Fedewa. He's going, to, he's going to out drive him into turn three right here. He's going to out break him and carry it down in there and he takes his position. He knew he could not mess around much longer because he lost four tenths of a second the last lap to Greg Biffle. Greg Biffle able to stretch his lead as Harvick gets by the 66 of Tim Fedewa for second. The best friend Greg Biffle had for a few laps was Tim Fedewa. Exactly. We'll run us about 15 or 20 laps here, and then they'll start catching laps. Those, both of those cars, Larry, have been around the top five all day. The problem they've got right now, they're stuck behind lap traffic. Jay Sauter in the 43 car, he's a lap down. And you know, right in front of them, you got Randy LaJoy and Ashton Lewis. Why are these guys racing? Because we've got a bunch of race cars that's a lap down. They're racing for all the way from position 13th back to 20th. Right, 12 cars on the lead lap. Elton Sawyer is 11th. The 18 of Jeff Purvis, the last two cars on the lead lap. And they got their lap back when that last caution came out. But we did have 10 cars on the lead lap. We've got nine cars off 
or out of the race. Greg Biffle has led 23 laps. Started seventh on the afternoon. Right now, he's about a tenth of a lap faster than Kevin Harvick. And, and, and I just feel strongly fuel mileage is out of the play. Randy Goss, he told him, be smooth. This is a hit-your-mark racetrack. Every corner, like a road course, like Pocono, you're driving down in that corner, you've got to hit your marks, you've got to run your line. That's easy to do, like he is right now, by himself. It gets harder to do in lap traffic. In the pre-race show, we saw Tim Fito talking about that very thing, Larry, how to hit your marks, what your visual reference is. But when you're in traffic, or as you said, working side by side with another car, you've got to compromise. You're not going to hit your marks every time. It's a very line-sensitive racetrack. Tim Fito riding the third position. Three and a quarter seconds behind the leader. You see in the upper left-hand portion of your screen, the leaders, the speeds they're running. The man that's leading the race is by far the quickest. Kevin Harvick was fourth quickest, and it's almost up to three seconds. But again, lap traffic is not far away. That's when that interval will shrink. Take a look at the interval again. Biffle's your leader. Jason Keller, fifth place in the 57 car, second quickest speed. But he's six and a half seconds behind the leader, Greg Biffle. Should also mention that Tony Raines, our pole sitter, is in the sixth position. Bobby Hamilton Jr. hanging around at seventh. And Bickle, who was up to third, is now riding in the eighth position. There you see Tony Range in that number 33. But the pace that Kevin Harvick set back in that first 100 laps, just part of the key to a good finish here today, was stay on the lead lap. Greg Biffle has led six different races. Today would be his seventh. So number 60 goes by the lap car, Kelly Denton in the 54 drawing a beat on David Donnie. He was at 25. Lap traffic is definitely throwing him a curve right now. Larry, let's check in with Jeff Hammond. Larry, Steve, you keep talking about this lap traffic. We're hearing down here in the pit area, a lot of these teams, especially Randy Goss, is talking to their spotters. Hey, talk to these slower cars. Get them to move a certain way to help us get through and get around this racetrack. We keep talking about it. But if you catch a guy at the wrong place at the wrong time, you can lose as much as a second to the guy behind you, or you can gain a second on the guy behind you. So your spotter is going to become very important as this thing goes on. You see the spotters here. They're right below us in the booth. And I've been watching them for about the last 10 or 15 laps. I've never seen people running around so much. <laughs> hey, let me buy. You yeah. let us buy. You, we, we get a caution. We'll let you have a lap back. Larry, we hear that every week. Spotters talking about cutting deals for their drivers. Sometimes those deals play out. Sometimes they don't happen. I, I guarantee you, we talk about rivalries on the racetrack. There's plenty of rivalries in that spot. <laughs> There's our leader, Greg Biffle. We have 52 laps remaining of 200 here in Nazareth. You're watching NASCAR on FX. Stay tuned for the last 50 laps. Lots of racing on your Fox family of networks. Wichita Cup qualifying on Thursday night, followed by the Goodies Dash Series at 9 p.m. Eastern. On Saturday, it's the CarQuest Auto Parts 300 at 1 o'clock, and that's followed by NASCAR Wichita Cup practice. Then on Sunday, it's NASCAR This Morning with John Roberts, and the Coca-Cola 600 will be on the air at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. Of course, the big story of the Coca-Cola 600, when Tony Stewart starts the oh, Coca-Cola 600, he hopefully already has 500 miles in his pocket just a few hours before that. That's going to be fascinating to watch at the Indianapolis 500 and the Coca-Cola 600. Rick Biffle continues to lead this race. He goes by the lap car of Clay Rogers. Rick Biffle, as we said, trying to win his second 
NASCAR Busch Series Race of the Year. And let's go down to Jeff Hammond with more on the 60. That's right, Steve. Had a little discussion this morning with Randy Goss, the crew chief on that car, and he said that when they got here at Nazareth, they did something that was kind of like uncharacteristic. They did not worry about working on qualifying. They worked on their race setup. They put a lot of time and a lot of effort in getting their car where it would turn, where it needed to be, and also where it'd be tight coming up off the corner, where it'd get back in the gas and drive up off the corner like they needed to. Also, this morning, they made a decision and made a gear change. These guys, we talk about the chemistry that these two have. It shows here today. They realize that the qualifying has not been what it needed to be, but they were getting behind in their race setups. So they really concentrated on working on their race setup, and it's starting to pay off here in the latter parts of this race. But Jeff, Larry touched on that in the pre-race. You said that these guys were going to have to make some educated guesses. It was hot and slick yesterday, cold and overcast today. 60 made a gear change, and it looks like it's working. Well, uh, again, a hot, slick racetrack. The race pace is slower. You normally will pull a little bit of a lower gear. They probably went to, I'm going to speculate, maybe a little higher gear because of the cooler conditions, turns more RPMs. Also, a higher gear will help the fuel mileage just a little bit. You're not turning as many RPMs. 58 laps complete, just 42 away from the checkered flag as Greg Biffle continues to lead here at the Nazareth 200, followed by the two of Kevin Harvick, the 10, or excuse me, the 66 of Tim Fidoa. Jeff Green, that 10, is fourth, and Jason Keller is fifth. A lot of these cars have been running in basically the same position most of the day, Larry. Well, the, the cars that's been good all day long, they're still up there and running in that top 10 or 12. You know, they've been slicing and dicing a little bit. Of course, Greg Biffle and Kevin Harvick pretty much been the class of the field all day. But the thing about Greg Biffle, he was he was third, he was fourth, he was fifth. But track position, now he can kind of run his own race. He can be patient with that lap traffic. Now he has the cream of the field. And he's in lap traffic. Battle for third. Jeff Green gets five feet away. And it's going to pull his teammate, Jason Keller, in that 57 car. These two cars have been catching Tim Fiedel, but they've been having to deal with lap traffic. Jeff Green now into the third position. Keller up to fourth. Fiedel is fifth. Oh, look at Fiedel. Drove off in that corner. Looked like he jumped back on the throttle. Car got real loose with him. Had to back completely off. Lost a lot of ground right there. I wonder if something's wrong with that car, Larry, or as, as you said, he just missed his mark that time. Well, again, all it takes, and I'm not talking about a car width, I'm talking about maybe a couple of feet, maybe a half a groove off. If you don't hit it just right, time it. Back to the throttle, back to the throttle too soon, you're going to throw the time of that race car off. Jeff Heyman also mentioned earlier he'd seen a lot of brake dust on the wheels. You're pretty hard on the brakes here. Yes, you are. You use a tremendous amount of brake getting into turn one and turn three. And when you jump on the brake too hard, it can upset the race car. Might have been what happened at 15 to 1 at 66. Winner of two races here at Nazareth. The NASCAR Bush Series have been racing here since 1988, 13 consecutive years. Fedewa won in 1995 and again in 1998. 37 laps remaining for Greg Biffle. Biffle came in here fourth in the point standings. Here I was, Larry, talking about Harvick, Green, and Keller in the point race. And he said, no, we're getting ready. Oh, yeah. Right. Again, those last two races, especially the Richmond wreck, really put a damper on his point situation. And the thing about the way Winston Cup, Bush Grand National Truck Series points is structured, it can take you one week to lose a bunch of ground. It can take you a month right. to gain it back. Consistency. All about consistency. And Larry, is it also true to say for a race team, you know, Biffle had that accident in Richmond, but... Does the race team, does their morale stay up if they know that they've run well but didn't finish well? I, I, I think, yeah, when you've got a team, especially the Randy Goss-led race team that's went through so much with Greg Biffle in the truck series and now in his rookie season, many a time went home with a wrecked race car. But when I felt good about it, as if we was in that wreck and it was somebody else's making and we had a good run going, that was a lot better feeling than if you'd been out there and run 25th all day long. You hate to tear a race car up, at least you knew you were there and you had a pretty good package. Yeah, it's also deceiving. You can finish 15th and be a non-factor, you know, the whole race. So you've got to, like you said, hang your hat on the fact that you were strong while you were out there. 
take a look at the points if the race finishes this way. He's about a fourth of a lap from a lot of lap traffic. He's got about four cars out in front of him, and then a little further in front of him, there's about eight cars in front of him. So again, here with 34 laps to go, strategies out the window, maybe the lap traffic, but right now he's got over a seven second lead. It's time for Greg Biffle to pull those belts tight. Bring it to the house. You're watching the Nazareth 200 on FX. Greg Biffle just 30 laps away from the checkered flag here at the Nazareth 200. He's having his way with the field right now. There's Jeff Green, our third place car. Kevin Harvick in second. Let's go down to Dick Berger with more on Jeff Green, Dick. Well, he's been having a hard time, as have many of the other front runners, getting through traffic. Some of these very slow cars are also so underfunded that the spotters don't have uniforms. So the top guys are wandering around up there in the spotter stand trying to find out the fellow or woman it is that is in contact with a car that they need to have moved over. And it's driving some of these drivers absolutely nuts. They don't even know who to talk to up there in the spotter stand because they don't all have uniforms. They're not used to that. Just saw Keith Barnwell, the spotter for Jeff Green in the 10 car. Jeff behind the 61 of Tim Sauter right now as he tries to go by the 61. Uh, Larry, let's go back to Jeff Hammond real quick. Jeff? Yeah, guys, one of the things I was thinking about listening to Randy Goss talk to his driver about traffic and how much of a lead he's got, like seven seconds. We talk about momentum. We talk about rhythm. And, Larry, you know yourself that sometimes when you're trying to guard that lead and protect that situation, you start trying to tell a driver how to drive, you mess that rhythm up, and sometimes that can come back and get you in more trouble and rather than just leave him alone and let him pick his own way through it. Yeah, Jeff, I believe with seven and a half second lead, I'm going to stay off the radio. You know, I'm going to maybe keep him posted if he gains a second on you. But with seven and a half seconds, the best thing I think Randy Goss could do is leave it to Greg Biffle and leave it to that spotter to do their job. Greg Biffle, 26 laps away from securing the checkered flag here at the Nazareth 200. He's got a pretty healthy lead right now over Kevin Harvick. Yeah, he's, he's 20, 25 laps away, but he's about two and a half to three seconds away from eight cars. And in those eight cars will be Jeff Purvis, Elton Sawyer, J. McMurray trying to stay on the lead lap. So he's got to try to pick and choose and be very careful here where he catches his fruit. In fact, he's zooming in right now on Jeff Purvis, who's the 12th place car, car on the lead lap. He'll be trying to stay on this lead lap in case the car comes out. Well, you know, that, that's demoralizing when you start lapping 12th, 11th, 10th place cars. He's got a strong piece on him. He right there, he beats it back to the throttle, but again, Jeff Purvis running that inside line is just so hard to pass. This is a long straightaway here, right here, down the back straightaway, and there's two cars right in front of Jeff Purvis running side by side. Hey, Larry, talk about the pink tape there on the front of this. Well, now we can't because our visual agent went by. Pink tape is gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Greg Biffle is about to shut the door in this race, but there's still 23 laps remaining. Don't leave your recliner. You're watching the Nazareth 200 on FX. Greg Biffle is the leader, 18 laps away from winning his second NASCAR Busch Series race of the year. He's led twice for a total of 67 laps. Now, Larry, what is what what can he be thinking right now? Is just drive his line? What he's thinking about right now is this bunch is getting sideways and sliding in front of him. But Elton Sawyer in the 98 car, he's trying to stay on the lead lap. That's the 11th place car. But he just goes by him. And that's, again, Greg Biffle. He never checks up. But look at this gaggle of cars in front of him. And several of those cars, Jamie McMurray in the 27, they're trying to stay on the lead lap. And that's the thing they got that whole race team's thinking about right now. I like the word conglomerate in cars. I like to you said oh, okay. <laughs> Jeff Hammond, what have you got to show us? Well, Larry, I found out found one of my favorite tools, a hammer. But guess what? When I was looking at this big old sledgehammer, I looked on one side and it says driver adjustment. I could have used one of those back when I was working with Darrell Walton. Every now and then he needed a little bit of adjustment. And fortunately for this group of guys today, Greg Biffle doesn't. 
now you need to adjust them for Chris Myers. Hey, he needed that <laughs> hammer last night when he got ambushed by super soakers. Bergman and Yoko laid siege to the Hollywood Hotel. We've been planning that for months. I guess Jeff has a dry shirt on today. Well, now, guys, I, I just want to say one thing. When you talk about the assassin, Bergman, you know, realize one thing. There will be a day for Myers and Hammond to retaliate. A day we are all looking forward to, Jeff. He's been telling me the booth is going to go down. Don't be in it. I, I, I will say I had prior knowledge of that assault. I, I should have told Jeff Hammond. Dick, what do you got? I'm just going to tell you, this thing is not over yet. Remember, we didn't have Jeannie Zelasco with us last night, and we didn't have you, Steve Burns. And there's more super soakers and more action yet to come. Do you have one with my name on it? You bet we do. <laughs> and it's a big one, and it's loaded and ready to go. I shouldn't say this, but I was cheering in the motel room last night. <laughs> <laughs> cheering for us, I hope, and Absolutely. not for those guys at the Hollywood Hotel. Hey, they spend all the time up there where it's air-conditioned and nice. Here we are at Pit Road and all the dirt and the smoke and the noise and the heat. They had it coming. Hey, Jeff Hammond said it, though. Real men work in the pits. Hey, guys, talk about action. Look at this battle we got for second place. Jeff Green in that 10 and his teammate, Jason Keller. They're all over the back of Kevin Harvick. Uh, Hanlon, I believe, going away from Kevin Harvick's car right now here late in the race. Boy, Kevin Harvick led 90 laps. Uh, he was about to stick up the show earlier, but look at Jeff Green. He's all over the back end there. Got to keep up with the racetrack. It's maybe like this set of tires they put on Kevin Harvick. Not as good, but Je boy, Jeff Green. Boom! I'm here, I'm here. Why? I'm here. Look, he got me. He got the hood. <laughs> I don't know if I've let him know quite that hard. <laughs> These guys, they'll be teammates again at Dover, Delaware here in a few weeks, back in the Winston Cup car. Jeff Green will be back up there driving that uh, number 30 car for Richard Children's Yeah, race. the America Online car. Let's watch Jeff Green. Let's take a replay. There he's behind Harvick. There. I'm here. Look at the rear wheels. He's the rear wheels the almost come up off the ground on the two car. But Harvick never checks <laughs> up. And Keller says, okay, you guys, I may try you on the outside here if you're going to play those games. Harvick never lifted, man. He stayed in those weird wheels. Maybe off the ground, but they were spinning. The RPMs came up, <laughs> that's for sure. 11 laps for Greg Biffle. He'll have his second career Bush Series win. There he is, the number six of the 2000 Truck Series champion. You know, Larry, there was some talk we heard in the pre-race show. Biffle talked about maybe going to Winston Cup as early as next year. Well, uh, again, I, I would hate to see him move too fast. You know, that's the mistake I think a lot of a lot of people make. Uh, get you a couple of years this Bush year. Learn how to win here, which he's certainly doing. You got to learn how to lose. You got to learn how to do a lot of things. Now, I will say he's on a pretty fast agenda, but uh, I'd, I'd love to see him run two good, solid years in this Bush series. He's fixed to put Jamie McMurray now, the 10th place car, down a lap. Battle for eight just in front of Greg Biffle. 59, Rich Bickle. 92, Jimmy Johnson. Biffle just put the 10th place car a lap down. And, and he's going to be in good shape. You know, we're on eight laps to go. He's got a, about a seven and a half second lead. He just needs Randy Goss his spot. They just need to keep him posted where Kevin Harvick, Jeff Green, this group is. Let's go down to Jeff Hammond. What's going on down there, Jeff? Well, Randy Goss was talking about, I think we're okay on fuel. I think we're okay on fuel. But if you'll notice right now, one of the crew members, which happens to be the motor tuner, Tim Caldwell, he's carrying a can of ether just in case that thing does run out of fuel. And he looks like he's a little bit nervous. He keeps shaking it, pacing back and forth and watching the car. I mean, it's not over with yet, guys. At least not for this guy. Hey, Jeff, tell Randy if they're nervous about fuel, Biffle could slow down just a little bit. I think he'd be okay. <laughs> I'll pass that on. I will. Right. <laughs> His lead almost nine seconds over Kevin Harvey. And how do you save fuel in a place like yeah, this? Exactly. You, well, you roll out of the throttle a little early. You get back on it a little later. You don't slow down no second, but you can buy you a couple of three tenths just by rolling out earlier, staying off the throttle. I used to tell my driver, keep the butterflies of the carburetor closed. That's the only way you're going to conserve fuel. And did they listen? Sometimes they did. <laughs> Sometimes they said, I can't hear you, Larry. You're breaking, you're breaking up. up. <laughs> Let's take a look at the time intervals next time around. Six laps remaining for Greg Biffle. 
There you see in the upper left-hand corner of your screen the interval. We're going to see the interval. Greg Biffle, the leader. Five laps remaining. That's a pretty healthy lead at almost nine seconds. Later. And he's still the fastest race car right now. Jeff Green, though, in that third place. But the problem Jeff Green's got, it's not Greg Biffle, it's Kevin Harvick. Yeah. Cannot get around him. And once he laid the wood to Harvick, look at the lead that Harvick now has over Green. Yeah, again, this is a fast racetrack. And, and front downforce is pretty important. And when he went up there and caved his hood in and did some damage to the front end, I'm going to speculate maybe that car's not turning as good because he's testing aerodynamics in the front end of it. Tim Speedwell running in the fifth position. Our pole sitter, Tony Raines, is in sixth in that blue number 33. And Bobby Hamilton Jr. hanging around in the 26. Yeah, you saw the last time on the speed chart, Jason Keller, the fourth place car, he actually had the fastest speed, but uh, he's got nine and a quarter seconds up there to Greg Biffle. So the only drama left is unless Greg Biffle runs out of gas or has a problem because he's got this one nailed down. He just needs to be smooth, 7.8 seconds. About two and a half laps to go here. You know, the words patience and race car drivers, they, they don't go together that way. No, they don't at all. <laughs> no, they don't. Two laps to go, two miles to go. Just need to be smooth. No cars pressuring him from behind. Just ride right there. But he's not. He's going <laughs> to go by <laughs> back to the 20 car. <laughs> but he's a racer. He's yep. a racer. Gets by Mike. White flag is out. Biffle led 133 laps at Nashville. Today he's led 84. Led 85, excuse me. About a half a lap to go. Goes down the back stretch. Plenty of room behind him, plenty of room in front of him. Greg Biffle's going to win his second race of the 2001 season in a good battle for second. Yeah, we got three cars here. We got Kevin Harvick, we got Jeff Green, Jason Keller. That's the way they're going to cross the line. Yep, Harvick held them off, held off the teammates. So Greg Biffle wins his second race of the NASCAR Bush season. He won the first time at Nashville on April 14th. Window net goes down. Let's go down to Jeff Hammond. Well, Randy Goss, you got your second win here at Nashville, buddy, and it looked pretty impressive. Man, the Granger, Granger Ford Taurus was awesome today. Uh, Biffle just really, really put his race face on. I never seen him drive that, that perfect before, you know, and through traffic. Uh, Harvick was probably as good as us, and, and uh, but Biffle just, he, he went for it in traffic. He, he put it out on a limb for us, and uh, I'm just happy for the guys. I appreciate all the hard work everybody's done for us. Randy, you think it uh, may be the fact that Harvick was uh, running second place maybe gave him a little more incentive to get the job done today? Well, he's always like that if you get him in the lead. It really doesn't matter, but uh, it was a great race for us. We missed our setup the last couple races in a row. So the whole team was a little bit nervous, especially myself, but uh, just happy for a good day. He had a good day, and that's for sure, Larry. When we come back, we'll talk to a victorious Greg Biffle. The second win of 2001. Take a look at your top five. You're watching NASCAR on FX. Greg Biffle becomes the second two-time winner on the NASCAR Bush Series circuit this year. Todd Bodine won at Rockingham and Vegas. And let's go down to victory lane. And Greg Biffle hopping out of the car, jumps on the window, a big yell to his crew. And I'm going to get wet. Here it comes. I knew it. Oh, man. <laughs> Come here, buddy. Well, what were you thinking in those last few laps? Everything in the bag or what? I tell you what, uh, I knew they had a lot better tires than I did, and uh, I told the guys, I said, man, you guys worked so hard today, and I'm going to drive my heart out the last 30 laps. I give it all I got, and I was getting pretty free there towards the end, and uh, trying to manipulate the lap traffic, and uh, the Ford Torses ran great today. Great pit stops. Randy Goss, I mean, what can I say about him? I wanted to come in. He says, stay out. We're staying out. We're going to the end. And uh, just How gutsy a claw was that? That was really gutsy. I mean, that took a lot to do that, and then I saw Harvick third on the board. Right after the first caution, I thought, we're dead, you know, but 
my car was really good on long runs, really good on those tires, and uh, man, it was just great. I'd like to say hi to my niece, Megan. She just turned 10 a couple days ago. I'd like to say hi. A couple of tough races in a row where you lost points, came out a couple of weeks ago in first, came into this one in fourth spot. Is this a championship team in its first year or not? Uh, it sure looks like it to me. I'll tell you, these guys are really working hard. And, uh, man, I'm just so excited to be back in Victory Lane. It's unbelievable. Uh, Victory Lane, wait a minute. You were in Victory Lane before. Did you get lost out there trying to find this place? Yeah, I made the comment on the radio. I said, I know where Victory Lane is here. I've been there. And I started down that road. I thought it was out there. All I right. know it was in front of the uh, bit road. Well, you keep driving like this, you're going to find Victory Lanes all over the country. All right, let's go to Jeff. Hey, we caught up with a guy who finished second here today. Are you tired today, Kevin Harvey? I'm not tired. I'm, I realize how sore I am now, but... Uh, you know, it was, it was a great day for the AC Delco car, and I think we had the second best car today. It's just uh, uh, our car got run tight on the second run, and we just left it. I thought it was the tires, and we didn't adjust on it and stayed that way. So uh, live and learn. I think uh, we didn't really lose anything in the points, so that's the main thing, racing for a championship. Well, he's on championship stride right now. Go work on those sore muscles, buddy. Congratulations. And a long weekend comes to an end finally for Kevin Harvick after doing double duty. Good run for him. And the reason he didn't lose anything in the points, he led the most laps here today, so the points pretty much will be a wash. He five points less than Greg Biffle. They both led laps, get five bonus points, but Kevin Harvick gets five extra points for leading most laps, so he's right. Today's a wash on the points. Let's take a look at the point standings following up on Larry McReynolds. Notice the top four. Top four from finishers in the race today. That's the reason they're there. Yeah, pretty big separation there between fourth Jason Keller and Mike McLaughlin. Right now, a four-horse race. Kenny Wallace in tenth after his hard accident into the wall. Tim Fita wins 16th. Uh, good run for him today. Top five, only the second top five this season. Only second top ten. Yeah, and, and not a whole lot of points between 11th and 20th. Let's go down to Jeff Hammond. He's with another Jeff. That's right. I've caught up, caught up with third place finisher Jeff Green. Hey, you got a nest quick I can have? I'm a little bit dog on tired. Oh, uh, not on me, not on me. Uh, <laughs> in me, uh, in me. <laughs> hey, tell me about your race today. Uh, it's pretty good, Jeff. Uh, you know, we just never could get all the way to the front. I think if we'd ever got a nest quick forward out front, it would have had air on the front end, and we could have done, you know, did what we needed to do. But uh, just behind those guys, I was too tight and trying to get off that sweeping corner, and it's killing me. And I uh, got up underneath Kevin there, like five or six to go, and. Had him jacked up a little bit, and he brake checked me before I knew he was on my carburetor, so I had to let off. We just, uh, you know, we got lucky there and didn't all wreck, but uh, he did what he had to do, and I wish I could have got him. We just thought Greg was going to run out of gas, you know. Uh, that long caution there where they was trying to get the 48 car off the track, we could all made it if we'd known that was going to happen, but we couldn't chance that. Uh, we had to get to the end with gas. You are saying also a few minutes ago that a uh, little difficult driving with some of the obstacles on the track today. Was you having a lot of trouble with traffic? There was a lot of, uh, let me see 54 eight there's a lot of them cars out there there's a bunch of eights and stuff but you know when the short the fields are short uh that puts cars in there there shouldn't be maybe and uh i mean my hat's off to them the guys need to experience and need to lapse but they're always in the way and this track just exaggerates it more than any other track because there's a, a one groove track around here there's not a lot of room for error if you miss your mark by an inch uh you're going to get out in the marbles and you can get out of shape so i mean a car a car width is a lot you know and it just bogs everybody down when you got to wait on somebody to go through a corner and the guy in front of you is gone when you when you get around the lap cars. But that's just what we have to deal with. Everybody had to deal with it. It's just track position is so critical everywhere, and it just magnifies when you come to here at Nazareth. Well, thank you. Dick Bergen, I believe you caught up with the man who finished behind Jeff Green. I did. He was in fourth position. Jason Keller, a good run today. Started fourth last week at New Hampshire and uh, wound up winning the race in the same car he drove today. But... Something went wrong. You had the same T-shirt on. Let's see the T-shirt that you wore last week in New Hampshire. I, uh, Hank right. Parker Jr. T-shirt. What happened? Didn't work today. Bring you the luck? Well, uh, my wife washed it when I got home from New Hampshire. I don't know if she washed all the luck out of it or <laughs> what, but, uh, you know, we had a good day. The uh, Albertsons Ford Taurus ran good all day, and, uh, you know, just we could catch them there and uh, just couldn't get by them. I had a little arrow push, but, uh, you know, hey, anytime you come off a win and, and, and really carry a lot of momentum in and, and have a good day, it's, it's nice, and... Uh, I didn't say hi to, uh, to Deb and the kids back home last week in Victory Lane, but uh, hi, guys. I'll see you in a couple hours. Love you guys. Miss you. How tough was the traffic today? You had so many cars that were so much slower than you were. Man, it was it was as tough today as I've ever seen it in, in a bush race. And uh, it's such a tough racetrack. And it seemed like I, I would catch the same cars in the front straightaway corner there every single lap. And it, just, it was tough. But 
you know, we got through it, and, and, and we're grinding. You know, we're uh, – this point – it's kind of hard to gain points when uh, the top four in points are the top four in the race. But uh, as long as we're one of those guys and keep at it, uh, we've got to beat these guys on the racetrack. So uh, I'm happy. You're thinking championship, aren't you? Well, we're thinking being consistent every week. If that if that materializes into a championship, uh, I know my race team's capable of winning the championship. We just got to put it all together and uh, have a little luck on our side, and the good Lord, you know, keep us safe, and we'll be okay. Driver's capable of that championship, too. Let's go to Jeff Hammond. Okay. And we've caught up with a guy who started the day out showing us how to get it, get around this racetrack. Former winner here, Tim Fiedel, come home fifth today. Yeah, it was a good run for us. We, uh, we were a little tight all day, but that's, a, you know, we needed a, a good run today. The Phillips 66 Chevrolet team's been... We've been struggling a little bit all year, inconsistent, but, uh, you know, I always seem to run good here. They, they gave me some good pit strategy today, gave some track position, and we were able to keep it for the most part. So uh, I'm happy with it. Uh, you know, it's a, some momentum going into a big one at Charlotte next week. Do you think that maybe the weather today played a little bit of guys having trouble getting their cars to turn? That, it played in a, in a part for us because uh, we were great in happy hour. That's one of the, I think I told you earlier it was one of the best cars I ever had in happy hour, and uh, we didn't adjust on it. And it cooled off about, I don't know, 15 degrees and no sun today. And it was sunny and hot yesterday. So uh, I didn't think the track would change, but it did a little bit. It tightened up, and uh, it hurt us just that little bit. How did you deal with traffic today? A lot of the guys have been talking about that. Uh, was traffic a factor for you? Patience <laughs> with a capital P. You know, it's, uh, it's tough. If you've never been here before, I mean, I remember when coming here for the first time and being one of the cars that was, you know, just trying to get laps in and, and uh, stay out of everybody's way. And uh, everybody did a good job for the most part. Uh, um, it's just, uh, it's hard when you're trying to keep the guy at bay behind you and uh, you run up on lap traffic. You just got to use a lot of patience and discretion. Well, a man who used a lot of patience today came home fifth. Larry, Steve. All right, thanks a lot, Jeff. Tim Fidoa with a fifth place finish, two-time winner here. Now, Greg Biffle is a two-time winner. Larry, look at those donuts, man. That's a peel-out. He knows how to celebrate a win. I'm with you. Great race today, Rich Pickle. He finished eighth, and he is with Dick Berger. Been doing better and better and better. And what is responsible for the improvement in your performance, Rich Pickle? Well, a lot of the guys at the shop have been working really hard, and we've cut some clips off these cars. We've been pushing all year, and we can't get the push out of the car. And, and after California, we were so frustrated that the car was so tight, but it was ready to spin out at the same time. They finally decided to cut the front ends off, put some new steering stuff on it. And it's really done. I mean, you know, we've, we've gotten better last week, and we were really good in happy hour. We've stumbled the race a little bit, but we're pretty good today, and it's pretty happy for the Kingford charcoal car that, uh, you know, everybody's been sticking with us. I know the guys out in California, Grant, and everybody out there has been, been uh, kind of upset the way we've been running, but I think we've got a little bit of a hand on it now, and, and uh, if we keep running like this, you know, we, we, can, we can gain on it. And there's one thing I wanted to change the car today. We just didn't have time yesterday. We had an oil leak and didn't get it changed, but I think that made us a little bit better. But uh, Every ball of sponsors and everybody, yeah, we're, we're getting this thing turned around. That's all it counts. Hey, this guy's a winning race car driver. He wins and wins and wins. He's won in virtually everything he's ever run before. How difficult is it when you get into a situation like this where you just try and try and the results aren't there and you know you can do it? Well, as fast as my hair's pulling out or falling out, you think I'm pulling it out, but uh, it's just frustrating. I mean, you know that you can do things. I mean, last year when I got uh, the call from Hendricks Drive, Terry Labonte's car, that was a big boost for me because we had a really good run in that car, Polk, you know, and you know you can do it. it just, you just got to get everybody together and get these things to turn, and, and that's the biggest thing. I mean, I've been fighting this push so long, and it just it drives you nuts, and everything we did the cars, it didn't matter. It just kept pushing and pushing and pushing, and, and w what would happen is the car would almost want to spin out, and it still wouldn't turn, so... Um, everything I knew in 25 years of driving and racing, I, I couldn't put my finger on it. And uh, they decided to put some clips on these cars, and that made a big difference. It's a humbling sport for sure. To Jeff Hammond. We've caught up with Jimmy Johnson. A couple of solid runs here uh, the last two weeks, and uh, how was the day for you? It wasn't too bad. You know, we had a great great day, and Cedric Monte Carlo real solid. And, uh, you know, once again, great car came from the shop and uh, good pit stops on pit road. Uh, we're, we're getting our momentum back. We had a run of bad races there, a lot of bad racing luck tore up some cars, and... And great to be back in the top 10, get some momentum back on our side going into the home race. So we're excited. It was a really good, solid effort. 
We talk about the home race. You're getting ready to go to Charlotte. You consider that place your home track now since you're going to be driving for Rick Hendrick? Yeah, now it's my home track, you know, coming from San Diego, El Cajona, actually. Uh, I've called that home for a long time, but I've been in Mooresville now for a long time, and uh, that's my new home. If I have a home track, that would be it, especially, like you said, with Hendrick right around the corner. So uh, I'm excited to go there. It's a real fun track to drive, challenging and all, so we're looking forward to it. We're looking forward to watching next week. Thanks. Steve? Yes, Jeff? What do we got going on up here, buddy? Well, we've got Greg Biffle currently uh, celebrating in Victory Lane. Doing the hat trick. Doing the hat right trick. Now. Larry, let's take a look at the full field rundown. Post sitter Tony Raines. He hangs out in the top top ten there. Comes home six. Bobby Hamilton Jr. Quite an eventful weekend this weekend and one to come next weekend. Comes home seven. Yep. Found out that he'll be in the 33 car for the 600. There you see the cars a lap down. And, uh, Larry, we should mention Ashton Lewis. Had a good run today. He was on the verge of getting his lap back. Good run for him. Yeah, he, he finished 14th one lap down, but he, he kept the leaders almost in sight that whole second half of the race. Ted Christopher filling in for Mike Skinner. 21 through 30, the rookie Scott Wimmer hit the wall early, just never could find his way around this racetrack. Clay Rogers in the car that I'm sure Matt Kenseth will be back in next week at Charlotte. Uh, he runs all day, and that's what he needed to do. All of these cars, of course, having problems. Kenny Wallace, 32nd, drops the position in points. Hard lick in turn one. Uh, definitely the, the worst incident of the day. 11 cars did not finish. Let's go to, back to Jeff Hammond. <laughs> I've caught up with a man who's not a loss for words, and that's Randy LaJoy. Randy, you were talking about your fuel mileage, buddy, and you said it what? It wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't what you said. We've oh, we, we run out of much. It's about the same as the top fuels. I went down to Englishtown. And I stood on the start line and watched those top few guys. Wow, those guys. They, they, they're serious. They, that, it buckled my knees to stand on that starting line. But it was good. We had a good day here with a Kleenex car. Uh, we weren't good in happy hour. We weren't good in qualifying. And, uh, you know, Wally and the guys did some stuff on it this morning. And we were decent. Uh, we had a little strategy. Had to come in and knock the fender on a tire. And uh, I thought that was going to work to our advantage. This place usually has a long green flag run. But the only problem is our, our fuel mileage is not where it needs to be, and we had to pit early. Uh, you know, and once we pit, the caution usually comes out a couple laps later, and, and that, that happened again today. Uh, it probably cost us five or six spots, uh, but it was a good day for the Kleenex Chevrolet. And, man, we had a really good test at Charlotte, so I'm looking forward to going to Charlotte. It's too bad my teammate Joe can't be there. Joe get better. He had a hard lick at Dover, and uh, he'll be out for a couple weeks. But, uh, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll put this Kleenex Chevrolet for Evans and Nemco and Victor Lane in Charlotte. Do you like running there at Charlotte? I mean, I think you've had some success there, but also it's kind of like, I guess you consider that, Nemechek's hometown also. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, all race teams want to win at Charlotte, but the biggest thing is they gave a really cool trophy. I want to put that up in my case. Hey, they have a cool trophy at Charlotte, and, you know, don't pay that well, but the trophy's cool. Oh, all right. You talk about a man who likes trophies, Dick Bergen? Well, Tony Raines started on the pole today, and what a year he is having. It's his sixth top ten finish of year 2001. Last year, coming into this race, he didn't have any top ten finishes. What's it going to take for us to beat you at Victory Lane, bud? I don't know. Uh, you know, we, we had a really good car yesterday in practice, qualified well, and uh, had a good happy hour. But uh, yesterday it was sunny. Today it uh, clouded up and the track cooled off, and we were just a little too tight. And we only had two tries to try and free it up and uh, just never got it where we needed it, you know. And we're, uh, we're a little disappointed with six. Last year, sixth place, we'd probably been doing cartwheels. So... Uh, we're getting closer, slow and steadily, but uh, I think we'll get there before the year's out. Oh, I think so, too. Let's go upstairs to see Burns. All right, thanks a lot, Dick. So, Greg Biffle wins his second race of the year. We'll come back with closing thoughts from Nazareth, Pennsylvania on FX. NASCAR on FX has been brought to you by Bush, by Go RVing, and by Goodyear. Greg Biffle started seventh today, but he came home first. He led 85 of 200 laps. Hey, are you ready for racing at Charlotte? We've got a lot for you this coming weekend. We're going to have qualifying. We're going to have Larry McReynolds' favorite race, the Goodies Dash Series. Oh, yeah, we can't wait to do that one, though. But a lot of big racing out there. Of course, qualifying on Thursday night under the lights. Then the Goodies Dash then Race. Then the Dash Race at 9 o'clock. And on 
Saturday, we'll have the CarQuest Auto Parts 300, followed by Winston Cup practice at 3.30 Eastern. Larry, how about Sunday? Well, in NASCAR this morning, the Breakfast Club there, 10 a.m. on Fox Sports Net. And then at 5 p.m., the longest of them all, the Coca-Cola 600 on Fox. We should mention this race was produced by the right-hander, Barry Landis, and directed by Mr. Jump Shot, Rich Russo. Pam Miller was our bit producer, as always. Kevin McRoby, David Blatt also on hand. Associate producers, Larry Lancaster and Fred Fran Morrison. The broadcast associate, none other than E.B. Eric Billigmeyer. Steve Burns sang so long for Larry McReynolds, Jeff Hammond, and Dr. Dick Bergman. We're going to see you at Charlotte coming up.